Hello, everyone, and welcome to this part of our series, Taking Control. I'm your host today, Michelle Dion, and I am very pleased to have my friend and special guest with me today, Angie Jackson. Angie, welcome. Thank you for having me today, Michelle. I'm so excited to be able to do this with you. Awesome. I'm excited, too. So we've been working on myself and a group of people in our local community, working on putting together a series of different topics where we can take control in these times where there's so many things that are going on in the world that are out of our reach and out of our control. And quite honestly, a lot of times that leads to a feeling of anxiety, depression, fear, um, all things I might add that weaken your immune system. So Angie um, is a holistic nutritionist. And if you've ever watched um, some of the other videos I've done over the years, We've actually done a lot of stuff on video together and talked about a lot of things because honestly, at the end of the day, food is medicine and medicine is food. So it's very important that especially right now, um, and especially while most of us are self-isolating, that we're working on the stuff inside to help us protect, be protected from whatever is going on outside. So I'm thrilled that Angie could join uh, me and we're going to talk about a variety of things and I think the, the first thing that we should really talk about is the emotional stuff, the fear that it is so easy to get caught up in and then it affects your whole system. Isn't that right, Angie? Yeah, that's right. Like it's probably one of the um, biggest things that affect our health would be um, stress, fear, beliefs because they all kind of go together. Um, and so what I'm hoping tonight, what I kind of wanted to bring up to discuss here, I was talking about ways that we can um, improve our immune systems, because right now, obviously, it's really important, but it's important all the time, and try to bring up some of the things and ways that we lose nutrients in our body, that things that harm our immune system that we might not have thought about, that could be easy to just make those lifestyle changes, and talk a little bit about nutrition. And I really want to encourage people to get out there and think and research. And I hope that I might say some things that you haven't heard before, and it might kind of spark something in you to want to go a little bit further and research a little bit into it and seeing how we connect the dots with deficiencies and um, different health conditions. Awesome. That sounds absolutely fabulous. So where should we start then? I'm excited. Well, I want to start. I want to just um, do a little bit about me just to kind of explain a little bit because there's a little bit of a story about my own health so I'm hoping that that might um, you know inspire some people to see how I kind of went about um, changing my health a little bit so I'm a registered holistic nutritionist I did a course at Canadian School of Natural Nutrition it was a couple years long and registered means I have a registration number so I'm recognized by some insurance companies so it's not just like a six-week course or something like that that I took. It was a pretty full intense course <laughs> for nutrition. And then I did another couple year course for functional nutrition. And then after that, I worked with Bach uh, Flower Remedies. I took a couple of courses for them. They are uh, wonderful when we're talking about um, stress and emotions because almost everything starts with your emotions. That's where things start to break down first. And usually a physical symptom is whatever manifested from it. So um, Bach flower remedies actually work with emotions to bring back balance. So then you can deal, you can start to deal with those emotions as they come. It's not going to fix your problem, but it's going to help you. Um, for example, um, one of my favorite ones that I take right now is white chestnut and it helps with a racing mind. So I like to take this before bed if I can't stop thinking. So if I just watch something before bed, had an argument with somebody or, you know, just those, when stuff just keeps going on and on. And I know right now with all the stuff with the COVID going on, a lot of people are worried and scared and you can't turn that, that brain off. Um, this will help with that. So it, it doesn't make the problem go away, but you're able to get a good night's sleep and then you can deal with the problem the next day a lot better. And um, they have pretty much one for every kind of emotion that you could think of. And then I also have the rescue remedy and this one's great for any kind of trauma. So anything that comes on sudden, so something in this situation as well, especially for kids going from like, you're not in school anymore to your home or with the parents trying to adjust to that, this can help you to adjust to that. And it's something that I have had, like since I've had kids, I always have this because it's good for temper tantrums. It's good when mom or dad are having a hard time. 
and so on, but to help everybody get calm so we can deal with the problem. So I feel like those are really important and I really enjoyed learning all about them and I use them, I have the whole kit and I use them all the time. And then I went on to study herbs. I did a, a year at the Herbal Academy and I just signed up for another two years. And those are huge for stress <laughs> and just for um, nurturing the body in general. Like it's probably uh, my favorite thing I've done in the last five or six years school-wise is, is the herbs. So anyways, why I started to get into nutrition so much, um, prior to that, I had thyroid issues. I had hy hyperthyroidism. And then my hyperthyroidism turned into hypothyroidism. And then I had that for years and, and couldn't shake it. Um, I had two kids in the time. And usually when you're pregnant, you know, like last trimester, when you give birth, um, if you already have thyroid issues, and even if you don't, that's often when you see hypothyroidism. And I went to school for nutrition. So then I started to learn that some of these things are just symptoms or not actual things, if that makes sense. Like, so I started going, oh, so what I'm eating is affecting, you know, my body. So I made some nutritional changes and I started to notice some really big um, health gains with that. And then you start working on the mind and the way you think and the way you view things and looking at things that would make you upset and how can you look at that situation different and all that stuff. And, you know, that started to change and it took me years. It took me probably three or four years to get a consistent um, thyroid reading. So where I'm at the normal range. And, and now it stays there because I understand what was contributing to it. And I understand how to fix that. I know what it feels like when I had hyperthyroidism. I didn't know I had hyperthyroidism. I went to the doctor for blood work and I was like, well, I'm thinking of starting a family. So he decided to check my thyroid. And my doctor's the kind of doctor that's like, well, if you're getting blood work, you might as well get a whole bunch of things tested. You're already here. So I'm like, sure, no problem. And that's how I found out. And when I found out and I looked it up online, I had all the symptoms. Like, and I mean, like I would go to the gym and my heart would race and other people, I was in a, um, a um, spin class and the instructor used to ask one of the guys, like, what's your heart rate at? And he'd say, whatever it is. And mine was like way higher. And I'm like, why is mine so high? But I didn't know anything was wrong with me. Cause it was always like that. And I was so hungry. I was like that Snickers guy from the commercial. Like I was angry if I couldn't eat, like angry, I was so hungry. And you know, and I didn't understand that that was a symptom or anything. Cause when it happens, when you start um, manifesting symptoms of things, it's all the time. So you just think that's how I normally feel. I just normally feel tired in the morning and I just normally get achy over here. And I just normally, like you just think those things become normal. And then all of a sudden I'm reading a book and it's like, those aren't normal. And I'm like, whoa, wait a second. So um, yeah, so I, I learned that. And that's something I hope to inspire people to um, to start to research and start to get into what's going on with me and is there things that other things I can think of and avenues and things I can do um, and things I can kind of pinpoint my own life um, and in my own what I, intake of food and stuff like that that maybe could change so that's what I'm hoping for um, we're talking about the COVID I COVID nineteen I know that's you know the hot topic right now and right now there's there's like a, there's a lack of nutritional information out there. And that's really disappointing to see um, as a nutritionist and as somebody who has seen a lot of um, health gains from just changing diet and can see what um, different foods can do to your body and how things suppress your immune system, that it, it's really surprising that it, there's nothing about that out there anywhere, any like, you know, big support from our government. So that really disappointed me. So I'm glad to be able to have an opportunity to talk a little bit about that tonight. Um, with the COVID-19, I know there's not a lot of research on it, but a couple of things that they're letting, that, that we do know is that people um, who are most at risk right now are elderly and are people who have underlying conditions. So those are a couple of things that are important. Those are big clues. Those are things that, you know, we can look at and say, what can we do about that? Like, you know, if somebody's elderly, um, that when you, as you age, you don't, your body doesn't produce the same stuff that it produced when you're younger. So your stomach acid usually gets depleted. You don't produce as much. Your, you don't produce as many enzymes. Your body's not able to absorb and assimilate the same when you're eating stuff. Your appetite, a lot of people have a decreased appetite. Um, somebody's living alone. They may not be feeding themselves that well. They're, you know, using a lot of um, maybe takeout and stuff like that. And even when you get into retirement homes, not, you know, you might want to, if you have 
um, somebody that you care about that's in a retirement home, just, you know, reviewing that menu, seeing what they're eating, making sure they're making healthy choices and asking them and bringing it up if they're not. When you go to visit people who are elderly, like you have somebody that lives at home, you know, an older, um, like a parent or something like that, like bringing them some soup every week. So they have, you know, soup for the week or something healthy, um, meeting them for an herbal tea and bringing that to the nursing home to have a tea with them or even a nice smoothie or something that's easy for them to absorb and get nutrients from like stuff like that because like really when you look at our overall diets the children and the elderly need the best possible diet the children are building their foundation of health and the elderly are starting to not um, produce as much stuff right so they need they need all those nutrients so that's how we should be viewing children and elderly then when we get into underlying conditions um, if that puts somebody at more risk, then we need to start looking at those underlying conditions. What can we do to help with those? We know pretty much every underlying condition is going to affect your immune system. So, you know, we need to kind of go in and, and see what can we do to make you as healthy as possible. And if we all kind of did that, then it would start to, you know, you wouldn't have as many underlying conditions or be in that, that risk group. We want to try to get as many people out of that risk group as we can. That's what we should be doing. So I don't understand why that's not being done. Like that's, um, that's just crazy to me. I mean, hand washing, mask wearing, all that stuff like that's fine. But if you catch the vi a virus, any virus, like you're, none of those things are going to help your immune system at that point. So we have, you have to look at that part as well. So it's really important. And I just think we all need to start taking our health into our own hands. Like when you look at the big picture, we live in our own body. Like this is my body I live in and I know the most about it because I live here. And then we look at, um, we have a whole like healthcare system. And it, like, I'd like to explain it on like a big spectrum of healthcare. We have so much available to us right now. And we have Western medicine that's on, you know, one point, but there's so many others. So it's important if something's not working for you that you, you utilize some of the others. I'm hoping, you know, one of the changes, everybody says, you know, this world's going to change. One of the changes I would love to see is to see different practitioners work together. I would love, you know, if you go to your, your medical doctor and they say, cause they're medical doctors, so they're going to give you a medical solution. So if they say, well, your, your blood pressure is high, instead of just going to medication, unless you need it because it's that high, they say, well, why don't you meet with this nutritionist or go and see what you can do, come back in six weeks and we'll test you again. And, you know, and we'll keep doing that and hopefully not keep you on this medication and working together more as a team. Like, I just, I think there's so much for us to utilize that it's just no, there's no reason that we, we shouldn't just jump in and do that and ask for that. I, I agree. And I think that it, it seems like we've just got so relaxed and comfortable with just letting the doctor do that that we don't ask the questions. And so, I mean, a lot of times a prescription is just a band-aid, isn't it? And it seems like with everything that's going on right now, people like nobody even on social media, like I've posted a couple times, you know, what are you doing to boost your immune system or what eating habits are you changing? And like, there's a few that like have automatic answers, but then there's other that you, others that you can tell they're just sort of, not really thinking about it until I ask the question. And I think, you know, how can we not know that this is part of how we're so susceptible to, to these things to begin with, is we've let our armor down, haven't we? Well, we have. And I mean, you can't just sit there and wait for somebody to come and take care of you. You've got to start that yourself and you have to be your own advocate for everything. Um, it doesn't matter where you go or what kind of health practitioner you seek. You still need to be in charge of what's going on in your own body. And as soon as you own that, it's, it's, a di it's different. It's no different than your house. You're not going to have hire somebody to come in and do work in your house and have them, you know, just come to your front door and tell you what they're going to do and not actually see the whole house, take an hour to look through it and go into detail. You're not going to have somebody just show you some, you know, a, a layout that you don't like, but they tell you that's best for your house. You're going to say, get out of my house. I'm not going to pay you to do that. Could you imagine if they come in and they're like, this room's going to be green and this is going to be red and you're going to have three sinks, right? Well, that's right. You know, and, and it, I mean, and I, and this isn't, and that's why I say it's like all around. It depends. Like it's, you want to find people to work with you that respect you. Um, like even sometimes I know even in the more natural field, um, because I'm a holistic nutritionist. So I like to go more, you know, with me, it's all about food and whole foods and stuff like that. Um, some people get heavy on supplements. And I mean, you don't want to 
be taking 15 different supplements. Like you should be trying to get as much as you can from your food. Sometimes supplements are necessary, but you don't want to be on supplements long term either. You want to be your body to work properly. So if you're deficient in something, taking that supplement is great. But the question as to why you're deficient would probably be even better. So those, those are the kinds of things that, you know, people need to talk about. Um, so I have a slide here I'm going to show. This one here, I call it the puzzle of health. And let me see if I can remember how to bring it up here. There it is. Okay. All right, there it is. Um, can you see it, Michelle? Yeah, it looks great. Perfect. <laughs> um, so this is just something I just kind of put together. And these are just a few pieces of the puzzles. It goes, it, it, there's so many, it's, it, you can just go on and on with it, but these are just some of the really big ones. So a few things that affect our health right here. Number one is digestion. So your body needs to properly absorb and assimilate nutrients as well as eliminate in order to run efficiently. So if you're not absorbing, it doesn't matter what you're eating. If you're not eliminating it like a proper time, you, if you're eliminating too quickly, you're not absorbing your nutrients. If you're not eliminating quick enough, then you are holding on to toxins in your body and they're just going through over and over again and feeding pathogenic bacteria. So both of those are pretty, those are, that's why, you know, almost everybody always wants to focus on digestion because it is just that important. And that's kind of where everything starts. Um, your food choices, what foods that you should be including in your diet to support your current health needs and goals. Um, conventional products that we use, um, things that you put on your skin or what you breathe in. So air fresheners, things of that sort. Would that yeah. be like your cleaning products as well? Definitely your cleaning products as well right. with your cleaning products too. And I mean, even when you're using like shampoos and um, conditioners and stuff, like you start reading what's on the labels of these things, you're washing your body in it, which is going to go straight, either going to go straight into your skin or you're cleaning with it, which you're going to breathe right into your lungs. But then you're dumping these chemicals down the, the drain. And like we have, you know, we have a facility that cleans our water. It doesn't clean all, like everything out of the water. It cleans certain things, like certain drugs stay in the water, um, you know, birth control, hormone um, replacement therapy drugs, stuff of that sort. That doesn't get cleaned out. So we get that back through our water and then certain things in the products that we're using as well. So you're really bringing it back to yourself at like a boomerang. So you really want to think about these things because you might think, well, I'm not drinking pine salt, but you're dumping it down your drain and it's going through a water treatment plan and then you're drinking water. So, sure. you know, you really got to think big picture for a lot of these things. Um, EMF exposure is pretty big. It directly affects the way your body processes work and can cause many imbalances. It has a very big impact on our immune system. And we have more um, EMF exposure than, than ever right now. Um, medications, so medications and antibiotics may deplete nutrients, cause side effects and change the body's microbiome. And um, stress, so emotional, physical stress, they both deplete our body of vital nutrients. So I just like to, those are kind of some of the big picture things <laughs> of what's going on. And then you can really go straight down those avenues to so many different things. Um, something I wanted to say with our health, one of the ways I like to kind of view it to give everybody kind of a big picture. And then we'll talk about a few of these things in a little bit more detail, hopefully be able to connect some dots for people. Um, is when I view our health, I view it like um, the gas gauge on your car. So when the gas gauge is full, everything's good, right? You got a full tank of gas. Now it's not realistic for people to always be full and perfectly healthy and everything's great. And I feel great today. It's not always normal. So I would say anywhere from half to full is a good place to be, right? Okay. What do you, what do you say, Michelle, 51% and over? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's a great place to be. <laughs> but then when you get lower, it's like you're driving your car and it goes under half a tank and you're like, Hmm, I should get more gas. And then it gets to a quarter tank and you're like, oh, I should get more gas. And then it gets to an eighth of a tank and you go, yeah, maybe tomorrow I'll get gas. I need to get gas, but you don't feel like I did. And then all of a sudden your e-light comes on. You're like, I have to go get gas. And I kind of um, compare that to when you start getting under, you start to feel different ways and either you don't, you're not acknowledging it because, you know, we're busy. We have lots of stuff going on 
or you're just not that concerned about it, or you are concerned about it. So you're just not, you know, you're trying to kind of bury it. But once that e-light comes on, that's when you need to go see your medical doctor and you're, you have a, you're getting physically diagnosed with something. And whatever you're getting physically diagnosed with didn't happen that day. That was something that happened probably when it was going under half a tank, but you know, didn't catch it in time. So then now when it's like, oh, okay, you kind of get aware of that, you start questioning the way that you feel and what's going on and um, hopefully putting that all together a little bit. So um, the things we want to look at is keeping your tank um, topped off, um, figure out what's using your gas up, because that's an important part. It's not just about eating healthy. It's like, what's taking the nutrients from us? Because if you can stop those things, that can make even a bigger difference in what you are eating you know and that way when you want to go out for pizza or have a few glasses of wine and stuff like that it's not going to be a big deal right like you have to it, it's it's more than just the food and then um, addressing the low gas before the light comes on so that's really important too so i think the first thing that we were going to talk about um just a little bit more we touched on it starting with the stress and the fear and and the beliefs like all these things that are really um impacting people. So stress from a nutritional standpoint, it's going to um, deplete your vitamin C, it's going to deplete your B vitamins, your magnesium, and your zinc. So those are the things that usually go first. And these are kind of like, to me, like you're going to hear this, okay, stress depletes this. You're going to hear these, these same nutrients get depleted by almost everything. And then you can see why people like magnesium so important for a um, good night's sleep. And so many people can't sleep or they wake up and can't get back to sleep. And when you start seeing all the things that steal our magnesium, it's like, it's no wonder that so many of us are deficient in it. Um, but with um, stress, it's, it's usually the starting point for things to start manifesting. So getting, you know, starting to find ways to be able to deal with your stress in a healthy way, because we're always going to have stress. We're never going to not have stress. And sometimes we get stresses that come and go. And sometimes we get ones that stay longer. And we usually can't plan for those stresses. So we don't know what we're going to be hit with. And the way the good stress is supposed to be, you know, the stress where we we're, we're in danger and we're able to get out of that danger or we need motivation. We're running a race. We need to get to that end or we have a paper that's due tonight and our presentation to do and you're stressed because you're nervous. Those are good stresses, but we don't, we're getting stressed like because we can't afford our bills or there's this virus going around and we don't know what's going on and we're scared or, you know, all these different things. And I think just in, in you know, response to like the whole COVID thing, I mean, with so much information going on and social media, if that's stressing you out, I would say to definitely um, look at somebody you know, a friend or family member that you can just message every day and talk to that can let you know what's going on that you need to know and then staying off the social media if that's stressing you out. There's no reason to put yourself through that if it's making you feel stressed out. So I think like that's a, a really big thing. Um, for me with stress, I always find getting outside is probably a big cure for it, even if I don't feel like it, even if it's just sitting on the porch with a warm drink, even if it's just going for a walk around the block, just things like that. Those are all safe things that we can do right now. So I would do that. Um, Epsom salt baths are excellent or putting Epsom salts on your shower floor. Um, and I usually oh, put really? them, well, I put them, yeah, like, so I put them away from where my shower's pouring down sure. and then that way I can kind of pick my feet and run them over it. And, you know, and you're soaking up the, um, it, it's very rich in magnesium. So you're soaking that up and it's nice and relaxing into your feet. <laughs> okay. So, so with, when you're doing that, are you also breathing it in and getting it in that way? Or is it just strictly through your skin? Um, I don't know about breathing it in, like how that works in the shower with that. I usually use an unscented. I don't use anything that has scent in it. Um, I don't like to be trapped in there with the scent. But so, so, but I do sometimes, depending, like you can use, like if you have essential oils and stuff that you like, you can put a couple drops in the corner of a shower and you'll get that in there. So if you want something to like pep you up, like some peppermint or some right. orange or citrus, citrus is always positive, things like that. That can be super helpful too. Um, but I'm always looking at like the nutritional side. So I'm like, get that magnesium in because that you're stressed out, you're losing magnesium. So you want to make sure you do things that relax you and replenish that, right? Um, but yeah, like, and, and then it's time to start exploring things like meditation and yoga and things of that sort. Yoga is more about the breathing. So even if you just did like a 10 minute yoga, that's just like stretches and doesn't really seem like anything. It's not so much about the exercise. It's about the breathing. And you'll find that you feel good afterwards. And there's so many different kinds of meditations. And if 
and, and meditation doesn't have to be like a, a video that you watch or listen to. It's just something that you can do. Like for me, like playing music's meditation to me because my mind stops when I play music and I can just enjoy it and be in that moment. So things like that, if you play an instrument, those are great ways to just unwind or if you like to read or write or anything like that, just finding stuff that makes you feel good and things that you have to, to go to those kind of things. A rescue remedy is, is wonderful for stress. Other things I like to do is use tea. There's so many great um, teas that relax and calm you, especially at night. Some of my favorite right now is I like lemon balm a lot. I just brought these <laughs> to show. Um, lemon balm is like the sunshine herb. This is like, they, it works really well when people are um, diagnosed with uh, the SAD for the, um, the seasonal, I'm not sure exactly what it stands for. Um, disorder though, but around this time of year, we're all getting low on our vitamin D and feeling kind of down in the dumps. So it's like a nice little drink of sunshine. And then this one here, any anything with chamomile in it, and this one's chamomile lavender, super relaxing and can help you for a nice restful night or a nice restful afternoon if you're just, you know, if you're just feeling like that. Um, I also like to use anything that's adaptogenic. So if you do a search for adaptogenic herbs and foods, stuff of that sort, those things help your body adapt to stress. And that's going to be emotional stress and also physical stress, including like EMFs and stuff like that. Um, I like to use mushrooms a lot. I'll just add some to my hot drink and just like a quarter of a teaspoon. So I'll buy like a package of like shaga mushroom, or you can get, um, I have one here. It says five mushroom. Um, I got this at the water buck. I don't know if you can see it or not. Try to, oh, there. I guess I should put it in the camera there. But it's just a mix of five mushrooms. So it's, it's, it'll help out with, um, and when it helps out with your body being stressed, it helps give you lots of antioxidants that your body's losing. So it helps to bring that stuff back in there. And then I like to use other stuff as well, but I, I'll let people research and see, because if you're on different medications and stuff like that, some things are recommended to talk to your doctor first before you do that. So I don't want to give a, a list out and it's different for everybody. But I would suggest to look into the word adaptogenic, look into adaptogenic herbs, adaptogenic foods, and see what you find. And then do a little bit of research there and include some of that kind of stuff into your diet. I do like a daily smoothie and I add like all my stuff in there. And, you know, that, that helps me with the stress <laughs> big time because I tend to, especially I have, you know, small kids and I'm homeschooling and, you know, it, it can be some long day, especially right now with no grandparent help. <laughs> So and it, it is what it is. So do you have anything that you wanted to add in for the um, stress, Michelle? Um, well, I think um, absolutely you're right as far as, you know, meditation is, is a great thing, but we all have our way of doing it. So whether, you know, when somebody's painting a picture, they're also meditating. People who are working on their houses right now, painting their houses or fixing something or playing an instrument, or cranking their tunes from, you know, their best year in high school or something that's that emotional recall. It's all the same thing. It puts you in that zone where you can just turn off the world for a little while and feel good. And another great idea for stress as well, and you made me think of it when you said sitting on the porch having your tea, is connecting with nature. You know, watching, we've actually been, um, Whenever I go to the uh, Dollarama, I get a, a bag of peanuts and we've been feeding the squirrels off our back deck and we have like a, a, a little, well, it was a birdhouse, but the squirrels have got crazy with it and knocked it over a couple of times looking for, for peanuts. But like, we're just about ready to name these guys. They're so brave. They come up. And so that is our turn off the chaos of the world thing. Let's crank some tunes, hang out, feed the squirrels, you know, just, just, just step away and just, but now I'm finding that because I've been working from home since like March 5th, which was like a lifetime ago, I'm actually finding a new normal where I'm starting to really like this now. I'm starting to really like my new routine and, and realizing that it's okay if I have a nap in the middle of the afternoon. Or it's okay if I wake up at two o'clock in the morning and start reading a part of a book or whatever. Like it's, it's really interesting how I'm transitioning because I think the shock has worn off a little bit, you know, and that was part of it 
at the beginning, but then I've been implementing the things that I know as far as stress. I've been getting back into the meditation, doing the stuff with the squirrels. And so, but I needed all those things to get me to where I am now. So I think there's definitely some great advice there to whatever it is that makes your heart hum, mm -hmm. that you make sure that you jump in with both feet. Well, I honestly feel like um, when it comes to nature, that when we take care of nature, we take care of ourselves. So we, it's always a continuous ongoing thing. So if you taking up things like gardening, so you're putting your hands right in the dirt, things like that. Like right now I'm taking up gardening. <laughs> it's interesting. I'm on take three of growing stuff already, but I'm learning along the way with my kids and it's fun. Um, and you know, when we go out there and something I taught my kids, cause we go for a lot of nature walks, we have nature journals and we do all this stuff together. Um, but something that I taught them was to pay attention to the things that you see and you'll be brought more. So if we see a snail on the ground, we might go walking down like Blackwell side road trail and we'll see one snail. And then all of a sudden on the way back, we'll see snails the whole way back because we stopped to notice it. Or if you see like a bird, like when I walk the dogs, I'm just like, it's so loud out in this neighborhood. Like there's birds everywhere. And you just, you just start noticing them. It seems like they all just come. We know like bird calls and stuff. So we know what we don't, my kids can tell me what birds are outside without seeing them. So it's really, it's really that is interesting. So, awesome. right? so it's, and my kids are the kids that will get off their bikes to run and hug a tree. <laughs> and we actually picked a favorite tree this year. And we go by it at least once a week and check out anything that any new growth, anything on it. So they can kind of observe it and see how it grows into the spring and summer and then back again into the fall. So it's like, it's kind of, it's, it's very um, interesting for them to see that. And it's neat to see the week by week changes and stuff of that sort. So that is so awesome. That is science 101. That is so great. Yeah, well, it's lots of fun when I get to be the teacher, <laughs> right? Because I get to decide today we're going to go for a bike ride in our pajamas, <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, like yeah, definitely finding what works for you and having a few ideas and things. And when you're feeling overwhelmed to, to go do them. And you know what? Even if you're the kind of person who, when you get overwhelmed, because this happens to me too, this happens to me. I have all these different avenues. I have herbs and baklava remedies and all these things that I know of to help me out. And then sometimes I'll go like a week with stuff going on and I'll be like, Oh yeah, I have bought flower remedies. I can just take that. Like the first few days of the whole, like this the whole thing exploded with the COVID. I was just like, well, like trying to adjust too, right? And then I was like, oh yeah, I have white chestnut. I'll just take that. And then I have no problem sleeping since then. I forget. So if you have somebody that you talk to and you, you know, and do stuff with, you could say like, can you remind me when I'm stressed out of the things I like to do that make me feel better? Because, you know, something like that might just be simple enough. Like, you know, just kind of thinking outside the box on what will help you, but Maybe we can do that to each other because I'm exactly the same. That is so funny. Absolutely true. We can call each other out. Be accountability buddies. <laughs> that sounds good to me. <laughs> um, so I'll go on now with a few of the other things that I want to touch on. And it's all with that um, puzzle that I showed that I just showed you a few minutes ago. Um, I'm not going to get like deep into like different nut like nutrients and stuff of that sort. But one I did want to talk about was vitamin D. Vitamin D is probably... Um, like if you ask me what I should do for my health, like the number one thing I think everybody should do is get their vitamin D tested. Vitamin D is probably the most important, not probably, to me, in my opinion, is the most important nutrient for immune health. And I feel like um, it's something that we should be getting tested every year. And it, I think it should be part of our healthcare system. And I hope that people speak up and it becomes part of our healthcare system. Because right now we pay $37 for the test and some doctors are reluctant, reluctant to give it to you because... I don't know if they just can't hand out so many, you know what I mean? Like they can't just give them all to their patients. So I feel like they, um, I, I know I've had a little bit of trouble sometimes, not with my own doctor, but with like my children's doctor trying to get some of these tests. So, um, but I think that it should be taken at least once in the fall to get an idea of where you are because vitamin D is fat soluble. So you store it in your fat. So what happens is we store it through the spring, summer, fall, and then it starts to deplete because we live in the Northern climate, right? So it depletes over the winter. And by now we're very depleted. Um, usually if somebody has any kind of immune issue, usually your vitamin D is going to be low or on the lower side. It should be in the optimal range, not just normal range. That's not good enough. And I'm going to show you this chart here because this is pretty interesting. This is the iceberg. So the iceberg shows you at the top rickets. So everybody, not everybody, but most people are familiar with vitamin D. I don't D. know what rickets is. 
So rickets is usually, it's like a, it's like when kids are really bow-legged, like their knees are bent outwards. Oh. Your bones are, vitamin D is super important for your bones and your teeth. So it's, it plays a huge role in that. And if um, babies are deficient in it, like you can see like developing that way. As, so it's, um, so okay. yeah, so, it, so the rickets there on the top of the iceberg, that was basically what our RDA, a recommended daily allowance of uh, vitamin D was set at so people didn't get rickets. And this happens with a lot of nutrients that are set at a very low RDA, um, just not based on something like vitamin D is based on not getting scurvy, or vitamin C story is based on not getting scurvy, but they forget about the rest, if that makes sense. Like okay. you need higher to, and it's the same with the vitamin D, you need to have an optimal level in order to get this all the underneath of the iceberg. So you see that it affects allergies and asthma and both of those allergies are, you know, it's, it's going to cause inflammation in your body. Asthma is inflammation in your body. Um, a lot of with the COVID-19 things that they're talking about specifically for underlying conditions was inflammation and your blood sugar. So those are two big things that affect, were affecting people if you would underlying conditions that include these things. So right off the bat, you can see that, um, and then they have cardiovascular disease right on there, colds and flus. Um, vitamin D, basically being in the optimal range will give you some protection against every strain of the flu. So when we have what we call a cold and flu season that comes on, why aren't we testing for vitamin D, everybody, making sure they're in the optimal range? That's the best thing we could do for everybody. We do not have anything else that will help you with every single strain of the flu. So it won't mean you don't get the flu, but it will mean that your body has a way better chance of it passing through with almost no issue. Um, it says diabetes type one, but it also diabetes type two is affected. It helps um, keep down inflammation in the pancreas. Um, dental cavities, your bones and your teeth are super um, linked to vitamin D. So if you have problems with your teeth, you probably have problems with your bones. If you have problems with your bones, you probably have problems with your teeth. Um, I always say to people, if you're looking at I mean, people have problems with their teeth, and they're like, what, what, what nutrients do I need? Well, you know what, look at what nutrients you need for your bones and that's what you need in your diet. So um, simple and then you start seeing a big list at the bottom that all have to do with pregnancy. So it's super important to have uh, proper levels of vitamin D during pregnancy. Is, um, is that something that they check when they take all the blood work at the beginning of your pregnancy then? Is that on the list, vitamin D? No, because you have to pay for vitamin D. So it's not on your list. You have to ask for that. So you have to be, that's where I start saying you need to take your health in your own hands because you need to know what to ask for. So you need to ask for the, that vitamin D as in a pregnancy, you need to ask. When you have a baby, vitamin D um, isn't made in your body. So when you're breastfeeding a baby, you, they get basically what your vitamin D is. So if you're not in the optimal range, that baby's not going to get enough vitamin D. Now, doctors are recommending now to give babies drops of vitamin D. So that's a way to, to give them vitamin D as well. But mom can also supplement enough that will cover both of them because some moms don't want to give their babies anything, right, when they're that young. So that's um, a good way to do that. But it's, a really, it's really important to know that. And, and wouldn't it be better to do it through the mom, right? Because mm -hmm. then you got two people you're looking after instead of just one. Oh yeah, but both in or at least both too, because really, like a baby, like they don't have a fully um, developed immune system. So you want to give them that nutrient that's really important for a fully developed immune system. And new moms are so tired, and you know their bodies are depleted in nutrients that it's important that they make sure that these ones that they need are in their diet. And I hear lots of people complain during pregnancy about getting sick a lot and um, allergies. They seem to go rampant during pregnancy, stuff like that. So I'm like, you know, that's why I'm always like, start there, just check your vitamin D, see where it's at. Because it's stored, you don't want to just blindly take it. So you want to make sure that you know how much you're supposed to be taking to get yourself back up into the optimal range and then have it retested to make sure that you're there. Um, vitamin D doesn't, it's hard to find it in natural sources. I do cod liver oil as a natural source, it's great, but you cannot, not you cannot, but you should not take it if you are smoke, if you smoke because of the vitamin A in it can have, an, you can have complications um, with your lungs. So that's something that to be wary of. They do have vitamin D supplements. Um, also, you know, fatty fish, egg yolks, um, some mushrooms have it in there. So if you're adding like these powdered mushrooms into your um, smoothies and stuff, you'll get a little bit. It's not a lot in them, but a little bit, right? And then of course the sun, 
But the problem with the sun <laughs> is that you need to make sure you're A, out in the sun. So if you're working in a job that July and November look the same, where you're inside and you're not doing anything, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not going to help you that much. If you're doing things out in the sun, like putting suntan lotion on, that's going to block the body from absorbing sun. If you're wearing sunglasses, well, the retinas in your eyes are letting your body know and signaling your body to absorb vitamin D. So wearing sunglasses all the time outside, you don't want to do that. I only wear them for driving because I mean, if I can't see the sun's in my eyes when I'm driving, it's dangerous, <laughs> but I normally won't wear sunglasses outside. Um, wearing clothing that covers up, you know, your body too much and also um, washing off right away and using soap all over your body. They say that you should just wash your pits and bits and let that vitamin D get be able to absorb into your body. So that's something to consider. Um, also, vitamin D is fat soluble, so you need fat to help absorb vitamin D. So if you're drinking like, I try to stay away from fortified products just in general. And usually when something's fortified, it's not gonna be like the best supplement. It's going to be something very cheap. So that's something to keep in mind. I'd rather just go get the supplement. So if you're, but if you're drinking like skim milk, or you're drinking like no fat yogurt or eating no fat yogurt and it's all like with vitamin D and um, orange juice, like there's no fat to absorb that vitamin D. And guess what? You're not absorbing that vitamin D, then that's going to affect the calcium. That's going to affect, you know, everything. It's just a whole chain of command of things. Um, and the, uh, you know, another thing that plays a role in uptake of our vitamin D is a, vitamin A. So our liver, when we absorb it from the sun, needs vitamin A to um, convert vitamin D into its active form. So if you don't have good gut health and your liver is needs to be detoxed, you're not doing anything to help your liver out, like a glass of lemon water once a day. And you know, there's certain herbs, like I love dandelion root, things like that, that will just, they just help keep your, your liver <laughs> nice and clean <laughs> as, you know, detox it as much as you can just through just regular eating and stuff. Um, then you're not going to be able to convert vitamin D. So that's something to think about. Another thing that plays a big role in vitamin D, um, absorbing it properly, is magnesium. So if you're stressed out, you can spend the whole day in the sun, but are you going to absorb that vitamin D properly? Probably not. So there we see that problem with the magnesium, and now it's leading into vitamin D. And now we've looked at that whole iceberg of things. So we've just opened ourselves up to all of those different things and it's going to affect everybody different and look different on everybody, wherever you're vulnerable. So some people it looks like allergies, some people it looks like diabetes, right? Um, most people are like, I think it's something like half people in the world are deficient or don't have enough vitamin D. And interestingly, I did um, a course on therapeutic supplementation and the instructor, he had everybody test their vitamin D. And all the people in this course were either uh, from a nutritionist up to a medical doctor. So it was just a whole, it's all people working in some kind of health. And almost everybody was either deficient or low. Wow. And, and, he, and he would keep track of that. So then he would show you the overall for all the years that he's been doing it as well. And he told a story about he had a marathon runner in California. So he was outside in the sun all the time that he worked with and they were deficient in vitamin D. So to just assume sitting out in the sun is enough, like oh, 20 minutes in the sun, unless you get that test, you don't know. And if you have some go things going on health-wise, it's wise to get that test. That's worth, that's well, like $37 well spent. Um, and then just like a note about it for people that are the most at risk for deficiencies would be people with darker skin because they don't absorb as much as quickly. Um, and then we have the elderly. Well, who's at risk right now with the COVID? The elderly. So should the elderly be getting um, a vitamin D tested? Probably. Um, and people with malabsorption issues. So that's almost any underlining condition. Because if you have a condition, you're probably not absorbing things properly. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So, so if you're not absorbing things properly, you're going to be deficient in vitamin D most likely or low. So those are things to consider. And if you feel like you fit into any of that, I would definitely look at as soon as we're able to get back out and start getting regular testing and stuff like that done to put that on your to-do list. Yeah, it sounds like it. Now, can you take too much? Can you have too much vitamin D in yes. your system? Yes. And it can be toxic if you take too much. So that's why I wouldn't be, I wouldn't tell somebody like, just go take it. Right. You can take a modest amount, like you could follow what's on the box or your package if you're taking it, or if you're taking it through food, you could do that. Um, you, you know, like I do cod liver oil, so I just, you know, follow what's on there. 
But if you don't know what your status is, you just, you don't know, you know what I mean? It's just, it's unknown. So I wouldn't go with like higher doses. If I knew what my, where my um, vitamin D level is at, then I can tell by my own, my body weight and everything, how much I should be taking to move it up. And then I would test it again in about three, four months and then make sure it's gone up and then stop. <laughs> and then when you start learning about the things that are stealing in a way, so I, you know, I use magnesium. I have a magnesium spray. I spray my feet every night or I take Epsom salt baths. So doing things to make sure I'm getting magnesium in my body and, you know, um, and all the stuff we're going to talk about here, just a few more things, but how we're kind of protecting ourselves. And you can see why I want to talk about vitamin D because it's just that important. And I just think everybody needs to know about it. Um, it, they say like even going outside, like the, it, it, it not only like one of the big things it does, a lot of people don't realize that vitamin D does the natural light does to your body. Is it, um, it helps your whole microbiome. It actually, um, cause your microbiome, everybody always thinks it's in your gut. It's all like the yeast and bacteria and all the things that live in your gut. And if they're, you have good bacteria, they work together, they give you vitamin K and they do all these great things in your body. And if they're not, then they're stealing nutrients from your body and things are going on. But your uh, microbiome is on your whole skin, your whole body. So you have like way more on the outside than you probably realize. And when you're outside in the sun, it actually um, feeds your microbiome. And I think, like in my opinion, it does more being in the sun, does more than anything you can take for your microbiome. Not thinking you shouldn't take anything, like if you wanna do probiotics or fermented foods and stuff like that, but number one should be sunshine. And every morning I go stand out in the sun and look at the sun <laughs> for a few minutes. Um, and when you look out at the sun, it's, I'm letting it, you know, um, get all over me. And it's also going to set up your melatonin and your dopamine for later in the evening when you go to bed. So what you're doing in the morning for a few minutes is setting you up for when you go to bed that night. So it's really important. Because everything's a cycle, right? Everything's a cycle. Everything is a cycle. Yeah. So it's, so I try and do that and it's hard. It's hard when it's cold because I don't like being cold, but it's definitely worth it. Um, so kind of to go in from vitamin D now, as we're kind of talking about the sun here, I like to talk about EMFs a little bit because that's another really big thing and it really affects our immune system. And it's um, a controversial uh, topic right now, isn't it really? Well, with the 5G and everything, it, it yeah. most certainly is. And that's not where I'm going with it. I'm just yeah. gonna talk about the basic EMFs that we have around us every day and what they're doing to us and that's it. Um, so basically, I just have a, I have a, um, this thing I printed out here. This is on my website, wakingupholistic.ca. I have a blog about my experience with EMFs. I had somebody come through my house and do readings for my whole house. And they gave me all kinds of information, did lots of like, they're here for like half a day. And it was almost like a mini workshop for me. And I learned a lot of stuff and it was super helpful. So anyways, on that article around the bottom, there's a link about um, electro hypersensitivity and it's really good. And I would suggest to read that. And I'm just going to read a couple little points from here just to explain, to kind of explain what, so EMFs is going to, is going to be electromagnetic um, frequency or radiation, pollution, however, you know, it's called all different kinds of things. Um, and there are some people who are actually um, diagnosed as electro hypersensitivity, but everybody's going to have a different range of what it does to you. It's going to affect your body, period. So it is important to, you know, to, not right now where a lot of people are stuck in the house, kids are on the computers more than ever, you know, all this stuff. So we really need to be able to protect our bodies against this kind of stuff. Um, so some of the sources are computers, fluorescent lighting, transformers, wireless antenna, cell and cordless phones, um, appliances, um, being close to cell phone towers, and power lines. So stuff like that. And some people don't realize like just little things like having your kitchen table by the fridge, like not having it right beside the fridge, not having appliances plugged in right beside, like, so wherever you sit to read or watch TV that you don't have a big bunch of stuff plugged in right there. I always say like the biggest, easiest thing is your bedroom because your sleep's going to be the most important thing. If you're not well rested, like your body restores itself while you sleep. So some of the easy things while you sleep is not plugging in a cell phone near your head. So you charge your cell phone in a low traffic area. Don't have a power bar plugged in on your, by your nightstand with a bunch of stuff plugged in. No power bar. Lamps and stuff, if you can plug them in somewhere else, do so. If you can plug in your alarm clock somewhere else, do so. Or move it as far away from your head as possible. 
um, keeping your room dark, try not to have electronics in your room because you don't, you know, you want it to be a spot where your body's like, oh, it's time to sleep while I'm in here. And turning your Wi-Fi off at night is super important because that's when your body restores itself and it can't restore itself properly if it, there's Wi-Fi running through it all the time. Um, keeping your cell phone, like you can put it on airplane mode. So if you're going to carry it in your pocket, turn off the Wi-Fi. Don't keep it on. Um, you know, especially if it's gonna be a long period of time. Like you don't want to sit there and cook that on you. Like things like the Fitbits and stuff like that. Like you don't want Wi-Fi on your body. You definitely don't want to sleep with Wi-Fi on your body. Um, you're just sitting there depleting from your body. So it's not really helping you. Like, great, I took this many steps, but you know what? Now I'm deficient in zinc. So really, you know what I mean? Like the big, you have to look at what the big picture is and I'm seeing all these things come out and I'm like, no, <laughs> but it, you know, it is what it is. And the thing is with EMF exposure, it, people don't realize how related it is to like the conditions that we have that are so common. So I just wanted to read a couple just to, for people to go, oh, wow, yeah. So they have this one and it's kind of divided up into some categories so like neurological, and that's like headaches, depression, anxiety, um, fatigue, nausea, irritability, um, flu-like symptoms, fever, hyperactivity. Like how many kids get so hyper after watching TV or be on a computer, you know, and that's one of the things you want to remember too, when you have an iPad and stuff like that, you never come on your lap, turn off the Wi-Fi if you're going to have any lap. Like if you're going to sit there and read a book and like hold it onto it, turn off the Wi-Fi and then enjoy your book. Like, you know, especially with kids, download their stuff, turn off the Wi-Fi, don't let them sit with it on their body. And it's just so important. And even in the cell phone manuals, it tells you to hold the phone like an inch away from your body. Like never to go like this when you're talking on it. And I try and just to do speakerphone all the time, just to make it easy, throw it down and do speakerphone if I talk on it, which isn't very often in my house because it's usually very loud here. Um, they have cardiac symptoms. So, you know, lower high blood pressure, shortness of breath, um, lower fast heart rate. And then we have respiratory. So of course right now, you don't want to bring on anything that's going to cause respiratory issues. Um, asthma, bronchitis, pneumonia, like these things are related. Um, and then you have, you know, your skin rashes and itching and burning and um, stuff for your eyes, cataracts, floaters, pain or burning in the eyes. Like a lot of times people think because they're staring at the computer all day and my, my um, eyes are sore. It's not just because you're staring at the computer. It's the energy that's from it that's actually affecting your body. And something I have here that I found super helpful are these. These are blue blockers. And I wear these at night. These ones are dark. You can get white eyes that are completely clear. And you get ones that clip over your glasses if you wear prescriptions. And they're not expensive, but they block out all the blue lights. So <laughs> put your glasses and put them back on too. <laughs> and you know what? So they have in it, it doesn't bother me when I'm wearing them. But the only Okay, so we're just, we just got a little bit of a glitch there. Technical <laughs> so, difficulties. A little bit of technical difficulty. So we're just talking about some of the different, um, we just finished talking about a bunch of different things that um, EMFs can cause being exposed to them and that are kind of common everyday things. A few other things on here were um, digestive problems and allergies, um, thyroid problems, um, night sweats, uh, altered sugar metabolism. That's a big one because there's a, they actually started to do research saying diabetes three is um, caused by your blood sugars not being stabilized by um, being around EMFs, which is absolutely crazy. And they started doing, you know, studies in places like if you look at like India, um, they had like no, no big major problems with diabetes but then all of a sudden they introduced all the call centers and stuff and then they, it, it just exploded there. And you're looking at these people who, you know, it's not saying everybody has a healthy diet there and stuff, but you're seeing it's not related to weight the same it is like here, it's always blamed on diet and it not, you know, that's it, this plays a big role in it as well. So it's not just diet. So it, that, that's why we need to look at all of the different things and how they affect us. You know, is it easy enough to just, you know, move your cell phone from by your bed somewhere else? Um, the tests they did were people running on treadmills and measuring their blood sugar who were diabetic and 
like it wasn't stabilizing on there. And usually when you exercise, it helps bring your blood sugar down. So even realizing like being on electrical equipment, like treadmills and things of that sort, going to play a part. So you might want to minimize that to get, you know, to when you're trying to decide, should I get a gym membership? Should I just walk outside? Should I, you know, those kind of things might help or at the gym, what are you going to work on? Maybe you'll do something different and do your walking and running and stuff outside. Like, you know, just trying to make those decisions. It's a lot better to make decisions when you have all of the options in front of you and you can see how they all impact your life. And that then, is so amazing. Like that whole list of things you just read off could all be attributed to something else. Yeah. And that's, right? yeah. And that's why I'm like, you have to look at your lifestyle and see what puzzle pieces fit into your life because it's different for everybody. So that's why, like, even with myself, if I'm doing a nutritional consultation, everybody can come in with the same, pro like, I can't sleep. I can't sleep. I can't, I can't say the same thing to everybody. It's going to look different. It's not, it's about, you have to actually look at that individual and what's your diet like and what, how do you think about things? Like, what do you believe? What do you, you know, what's your day like? Where do you work? Like you sit by computer all day. Cause that's going to make a big difference. A cashier under um, fluorescent lights by a computer all day is going to impact their vitamin D. It's going to imp impact their microbiome. It's going to impact everything. A lot of people don't realize like with blue light. So this is why I'm wearing, you know, with these glasses, or I'm saying it's so important to block blue light um, is the blue light actually, it will simplify your microbiome. So what it does is your, your microbiome will like release all the different lights that it has that you get. So the natural spectrum of light you get from the sun and stuff. So when you get way too much blue, you're going, they're going to let out all this blue um, light in your body and it's going to deplete um, different things in your body. And one of the things that depletes are flavins. And one of the flavins people know about or um, might think about is vitamin B2, which is riboflavin. And it's used as like a cofactor in like um, detoxifying your liver, your metabolism. So I see people have problems losing weight and it's because they're around too many electrical devices. I work in an office all day. I'm by a computer. I have a printer plugged in beside me. I don't know why I can't lose weight. I run, I eat good. Why can't I lose weight? There you go. Like, you know, it could be one of the reasons. So it's so important um, to be aware of that. And then I just had like four points on the back I wanted to read. But this has like this article. I mean, if you went read through the biological effects of EMF and EMR exposure, like it's it's pretty crazy, right? When you actually see it and then you recognize it today. So one of them was induces oxidative damage, leading to depletion of the body's natural store of antioxidants like superoxide dimutase and a bunch of others, um, superoxide and melatonin as well. So you see why people can't sleep. You have your Wi-Fi on, you keep waking up and you can't sleep. Um, superoxide dimutase is our most powerful antioxidant in our body. So if I'm going to spend a lot of time on the computer, I'm going to be adding like shaga mushroom because that's like your best source of it ever into my tea and have a tea with that to make sure I'm not depleting all that from my body. Um, and just knowing that I'm able to kind of control that a little bit, right? Because we have to spend time doing stuff in this world. Um, it also affects your um, cholesterol as well. So that's because it because having depressed level of antioxidants in your blood goes on and affects your cholesterol. So if you have cholesterol issues, are you going back and looking into your antioxidants and what could be depleting them? You're right, stress, EMFs. Now we have an, another thing to add to our list. Um, it affects abnormal influx of calcium into cells. So that's going to um, trigger histamine. You're going to see um, more allergic reactions or can aggravate allergic reactions. And we see tons, like and anymore, it seems like when we get between seasons, people are just crazy, you know, just nose running, eyes running, everything, right? And it seems like it's just getting worse and worse, you know, not a coincidence. So um, that's something that it does. Um, and also if it's doing stuff to your calcium, you got to think about your bone health as well there and your teeth health. Um, induces a decrease in numbers of your natural killer cells. So it makes your body weaker. Um, it weakens your body's ability to recover from viral and other types of infections. So like, I mean, you get sick, do you wanna get over it fast or slow? You know what I mean? So that's something that's important to think about. And then the other point I just wanted to put, cause these are the ones I want to bring up that had most to do with like thinking about COVID in mind, was increases viruses, bacteria, mold, parasites, and yeast in the blood of the human host. Um, it basically like it feeds, it feeds these things, right? And they, you know, if anybody wants to look up like the terrains theory, like it's a great, it's a great read. It's really interesting. Um, 
making your body the terrain of your body so it's not like a host to viruses. So when they come to your body, they're like, I don't want to be there. <laughs> so it's like you want you you want to make your body not hospitable to these things. So creating a body that's not is very important and that's very helpful. Well, and it's so interesting, you know, when you think about no matter how old you are, it doesn't matter. You think about the last 10 years of your life, how many things that have changed, like as far as the illnesses, even shapes of people's bodies as they gain weight, you know, all the different things. And then go back 10 years before that. Like in my lifetime, when I think about the things that people dealt with when I was in my 20s versus now, just uh, a great example, women in fertility or people in fertility, I shouldn't just say women, but like, you know, there's never been a time where people have struggled so much to have babies, right? Different things like that, the allergies. And it made me wonder when you're saying about people having allergies, people who have allergy for, allergies for that just one season is a little bit uh, interesting as well, isn't it? To think, wow, you've never ever had them before. You just had them for one season. Is that really what it was? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. And it's, I mean, in anything like that, it's, there's some kind of, there's something deficient in your body. And when you have one deficiency, it's like a whole, it's like dominoes falling down. It leads to another and leads to another. They all work together. And if you ha do have a deficiency, you're going to have others. Like you're not going to have just one. So if you find that you have one, the question is, why is it deficient? So that's always where you want to go with that. Um, the other things were that we were looking at were, um, I know we talked about cleaners and stuff, but like chemicals in your healthcare and, um, with healthcare, there's almost no regulations on what they can put in there. They can hide a lot of stuff in there. And if you go and start digging into like documentaries and stuff like that, you'll see that like there's, there's really, it's really slack with what they can use and what they can do. Um, and then I have this book here and I really like this book. It's called Undiet by Megan Teltner. And I like it because it's a good kind of all around book. It's about new, it's about, so if you're just kind of new to wanting to learn about health and stuff like that, you don't want to spend a lot of money or take a course because like, you know, everybody has time or wants to do that. This book is great because she talks about like a lot of lifestyle stuff in here as well. There's recipes in here and, and stuff, but tons of charts of things. I love charts. I find that easier to look at and read. Um, but I just wanted to read a couple of things that were in some of our beauty products because just to get an idea, and I just picked a couple of things that I thought were just very common. So I would just suggest like if you're going to eat something off the shelf, you're going to read the back of your label. So if you're going to put something on your body, you're going to read the back of your label and you're going to understand what's on there and what's, what's in there and before you use it. So that's really important. And if you haven't been doing that, I would suggest that as you run out of product to start doing that and change up your products to things that are clean. Again, we talked about it goes down the drain, it comes back to you. So you don't want to drink that deodorant. So that has, you know, the food coloring in it. So, um, but one of them was coal tar dye, which doesn't sound common, but it's used as a coloring agent and often ingredient found in DNC blue number one, green number three, yellow number five, yellow number six, and red number 33. So those are a lot more common. People have heard those everywhere and that's in foods, but that's also in a lot of products. So you think of like bubble baths and hair gels and even shampoos, like anything that has like color in it, like why does it need that color in it? And then you're like, you're in a bath, you're just soaking in that, you're soaking that through your skin. And this is the health risk. It's a known human carcinogen and it's linked to severe allergic reactions, asthma attacks, headaches, nausea, fatigue, nervousness, lack of concentration, et cetera. And again, we're talking about inflammation and asthma and things to do with your respiratory system. So do you want to put yourself more at risk with these things? Like, of course not, right? And we don't think about that. And, you know, we, and then plus a lot of these things will have um, fragrances added into it as well. So then you're breathing it in as well as, especially if it's in a, bath, a hot bath, you're, you're just breathing and you're, and you got to remember in a bath, your, your pores are open. So they're absorbing even more. Um, the, one of the other ones I wanted to say was, um, uh, what other ones I have in here? Um, yeah, fragrances. So they, synthetic fragrances are made up of hundreds of chemicals. And when you see like just the word fragrance, like you don't even know what it is and they can just write that. And that can be any of hundreds of chemicals and it can cause, um, it's linked to, to being carcinogenic. It's linked to allergies, dermatitis, and respiratory and reproductive problems. 
And, you know, I mean, people are using that in perfumes or using that in, you know, so many things have fragrance in it. And then you're looking at um, air fresheners that you plug in, you're breathing that straight into your lungs. So when something's like, oh, it can be linked to allergies and respiratory issues, you're breathing that into your lungs. So you got to really, really think about that. Um, and then the last one was sodium lauryl sulfate, which is SLS, which is really common. It's used as a foaming agent. So you can see that in toothpaste, shampoos, bubble baths. And, it's, and all it is is because we're so used to products doing that, that we're like, I don't want a bubble bath that doesn't bubble up. Like, you know what I mean? It's not about just soaking in something that's just nice and relaxing for our skin. And, um, and this one here, it builds up in the heart, liver, lungs, and brain for, um, from skin contact and it may cause damage to these organs. So like it builds up in your body over time. So is your body, you know, if you you have issues, you don't think your liver's working, you know, at hundred percent and whatever, you know what I mean? Are you able to get the stuff out of your body quick, like quick enough or not? Is it worth it? Is it worth the extra job for your body to do rather than, you know, being able to do other things to keep you healthy? Like you got to think about that. And just to smell good. It's a little crazy, isn't it? When you think about it. Yeah. And, and then like when we're talking about, um, you know, chemicals in our food and water as well. Um, like in the water, like we know we have all kinds of stuff put in there. You know, a big thing in our water is chlorine. And like, what well, you know, for me and fluoride and for me uh, with my thyroid, the things that really helped me after changing my diet, changing my lifestyle was changing my water because fluoride and chlorine both compete for the uptake of iodine in your body and your thyroid need is it iodine's food for your thyroid so doing something like like so you're in the shower and again your pores are all open and you're sitting there absorbing all the chlorine in the shower bath um so you can get things like just like a filter to put on your shower so you can filter out the chlorine and we have one for all, our whole house we did that through reliance but it's like I, I don't think it's expensive for the one for your shower if you just want to try it out and see if you feel different we do like reverse osmosis and got rid of the chloride out of our water stuff like that but i mean it's worth looking into to see if these things are impacting some impacting something in your health and if they are then it's like okay well, why not try without it and see if there's a difference and I definitely seen a difference for myself. So it's definitely worth looking into. And even just starting <clears throat> with one thing, right? You don't have to get overwhelmed. Start with one yeah. thing first. I got to tell you, since we've been doing things together, um, I know I've mentioned this before. So we now do the magnesium spray under our feet. We do the cod liver oil. Um, we've moved our electronics for the most part. And then I'm super excited to say it's taken me days and days to get in the order of them shipping my order. But I order things from well.ca. They're out of, I believe, Guelph, Ontario. So I keep putting this order in and then they're like, we're, I don't know. My timing wasn't right, but today my timing is right. <laughs> so we're getting aluminum free deodorant and fluoride free um, toothpaste to try. So I, and same thing, just if I figure if we just try one thing or this is two things, but just it, little implementations along the way can equal big changes in the long run. Yeah, it's just starting. So the, the um, best way to get started is just to get started, right? And you have, like you have to just little things at a time and they add up and, you know, it's, you shouldn't have, like, don't feel like you're overwhelmed, like you have to do everything at once. But I always say like, when things start getting empty, then that's the time, that's your indication to look for something different and see what there is, you know, and ask around a good spot to ask is on like Facebook or somewhere like that, because you have a lot of people who are local to you on there who can tell you, and we have a lot of great local places to get things. I like well.ca as well. Um, they have a good selection of stuff. So I order from there from time to time as well. And they have really good customer service there too. <laughs> they do. And they have those five mushrooms you just held up. Yes, that's from, see, and I bought that at, this is Harmonic Arts. And I like to order directly from them because I get lots of herbs and stuff like that. But I've seen that they had them right now. We can't, they're closed. They're only selling through their suppliers. So you can only get it from stores, their products right now. So I've been eyeing them on on there if they don't have them at the water bug is my plan B if I run out. <laughs> but hopefully Harmonic Arts will be open back up again. Now, does that last you quite a while, that little container? Because it's a powder, right? Yeah, it lasts me a long time. I use about a quarter teaspoon. So I don't use a ton. 
I don't feel like you need to overdo it with things. I feel like you start small and then you kind of build up if you want more and a quarter teaspoon to me seems to be enough. So that's all I use. I like to like use, like I like to use a lot of superfoods and stuff like that to get extra nutrients into my body. Um, and a lot of teas, teas are just herbal teas are just packed with nutrients. So I, I love to use that kind of stuff, but you don't, a little goes a long way. So it's very inexpensive and easy. So that's what I like about it. Cause it shouldn't be hard. Um, the other thing I want to talk about too is I'm talking about chemicals and foods. And I mean, that can be a whole big conversation. I just wanted to, I have a, um, a thing here and I just wanted to read a couple things on here just to get, get people an idea of where I'm going with this without getting into it too much. Like we know there's chemicals, things are sprayed and blah, blah, blah. A um, couple of things that people don't realize though is there's not really tests done on the combinations of things. And then the tests are also done on like, if you're buying food and it's like, here's your serving size, but you're eating like the whole box, you're getting a whole bunch more of everything that you don't want as well. And when chemicals combine, it's not like um, there's like a synergistic, um, effect it's not like one plus one equals two it's like one chemical plus one chemical can equal six chemicals mm. so there's a lot of things that can go on so it's really important like to eat food that's as clean as possible and one of the things um i was just reading about like pesticides and it was just talking about a couple of different ones and it was talking about like organophosphates and they they're in pesticides that target the nervous system so if it's targeting the nervous system of um and insects like is it going to target ours at some point, like what amount safe, we're all different, what's a little bit for somebody can be a lot to somebody else. And we need to remember that. But then they go on and say several of them have been banned or restricted due to toxic accidental exposures, because a lot of the testing gets done when people are exposed accidentally and get a high amount and cannot deny that the problem came from that. Because when we're eating and doing all of these things, and we have a health issue, we can never attribute it back to, well, it's because I drink pop or because I do this, because we do so many different things that impact it. And that's why it's so hard to get these things that shouldn't be on our market taken off the market. And too many things are allowed on here. Like basically what I read from this is that they allow these products to be on here and then they ban them. So if it came to a point that need to be banned, it should never have made it in the first place. So this is a common theme in our food, our water, our our beauty supplies, our cleaners, our everything. So that's why you need to do your research because there's nobody out there protecting you because it's a business. So things are able to get in that shouldn't and it's run as a business. So that's why when you go local and you're face to face with the farmer and you're, you know, you can ask them these questions and stuff like that because it's different. It's not somebody in a corporation that's just handing out instructions and looking at, because what do they look at? The profits, the bottom line every year. They don't, they look at how do we sell these things? They don't look at, let's make people healthier. Nobody does that. Well, so the prime um, example of that is cigarettes, isn't it? Look at that when you look at how they lied for years and they took the signs down, changed the packaging, made people cover up that they're selling them, yet we still sell them. They used to get no sense. Sense. by medical doctors, they were recommended. And I am very, very, very disappointed to see our government not stand up and do something about smoking when we have a respiratory virus going around. Like they should be offering, we have, there's lots of tools and stuff to help people quit. So they should be offering a lot of these tools and products for free and trying to encourage people to do, to quit. And especially now, cause this would be a good time for people that are, haven't quit yet, would be a really good time to quit. And even like a lot of people don't realize like smoking um, plays a big role in your body's ability to be able to absorb things um, and process nutrients. Um, big ones that they lose is magne again, magnesium, um, vitamin C, somebody that smokes needs like twice as much vitamin C as some, like as, um, a person who doesn't smoke, um, selenium, it depletes your selenium and selenium will then work against zinc. So zinc can't do its job. And zinc is so important for your immune health. And it's, um, a cofactor for superoxide dimutase. So your superoxide dimutase is one of your biggest antioxidants. And then you're around EMFs, you're, that's depleting it, stress depleting, and then you're smoking and you're depleting it. And you're basically kicking yourself right in the immune system. Like you don't want to do that. So why, why wouldn't our government stand up and, and, and support people if they want to quit or mention it? Because where are, where are our professionals, our health professionals, that are stepping up and saying this. I can't believe there's a respiratory virus and it's not even mentioned and there's no support available. So that's my little. 
the rant for that. And you're um, absolutely right, though, especially right now when there's so many things that are going to come out of this different. So wouldn't it be a great time to take those tobacco farmers and help them get, I don't know, like I'm just using hemp for an example, but get them to flip into doing something else, right? Like, I mean, they're concerned enough about the people to make them stay home and concerned enough about the people to not use the boat ramp and don't go to the park and this, that, and the other, yet they just raise the prices of cigarettes. Just saying, just saying, interesting. Things that make you go, hmm. Well, I mean, and it's a business, right? And it, and that's what they're looking at. They're not looking at, you know, and that's where we need to start looking out for each other. And that's what I hope. That's what I hope the change is. Our healthcare becomes healthcare where we take care of each other. Like, I feel like there's a need for that out there. I don't like, I see like a meme that goes around and it lists all these autoimmune diseases. And it's like, well, if you have it, you have it for life and you have it. And I'm like, like, why do you believe that? Why do you accept that as a belief? And I'm looking at a lot of them. And I'm like, a lot of these can be controlled, if not reversed, or at least controlled and, you know, by diet and lifestyle. So right. why, are, why, are, why are people getting told there's no hope? And it shapes people's beliefs to think there is no hope for me. And that really, that really bothers me. And, and whenever I see that, like, I always think that when people pass it around, I'm like, no, there is, there's always stuff you can do. There's always things. Um, and then just to continue on a little bit here, just I had a couple charts I just wanted to show. And actually this one here is a good one. It's, um, this is vitamin C. And this one talks about, let me pull it up here on my computer. This one is, is just basically talks about how much the people need. Um, so the normal person needs four to 15 grams. And then just to show you how much we need when we are sick. So normal healthy person, four to 15 grams mild cold, 30 to 60 grams, yet severe, you're 60 to 100 plus, and like flu, 100 to 150. So when you see people talking about like using intravenous vitamin C and stuff, like this is why your body needs a lot. Now, if you smoke, your body needs at least twice as much. You have underlying medical conditions, your body needs even more. You see how it affects allergies, anxiety. When you get stressed, like as soon as you get stressed, your adrenals take up all your vitamin C, like that's what it uses. So, um, you know, if you take vitamin C, it's a good time to take it is when you feel stressed is to take a little bit of vitamin C or eat something with vitamin C in it. Um, vitamin C is water soluble. So you don't, whatever you take, your body will excrete the rest that it doesn't use. So you need to continuously have it throughout the day. So this is one of the reasons too, when you look at this chart, people go buy like the 500 milligram chewable tablets of vitamin D or vitamin C and they had the flu and they say, it didn't do anything. <laughs> well, no, it didn't do anything. You need a whole lot more than that. And you need it. You see the dosages um, per hour. You need to split it up and take it, you know, um, like that way. So a lot of people don't realize that and um, that you actually need, you, you actually need a lot of it. So I like to try to even just including foods that are high in vitamin C throughout your meals and snacks and with the foods and stuff that you eat. It's, it's so important. If you're getting it throughout the day, then it's helping to keep your body um, replenished. And then I think part of the problem is that we live in this world of instant gratification. So people struggle with the concept of, you know, I can fix it over time. You know what I mean? And having the patience and, and, um, the, yeah, the patience and, and the commitment, I guess, to fix something long-term where it's a lot easier to just get the prescription, put the bandage on. I mean, that's a lot of the reason why we're in this opioid crisis, isn't it? People that have had legit injuries, they follow the procedure dictated by their physician. Next thing you know, they don't have a job and they're a drug addict, right? Exactly. And, and you know what, like um, everybody wants a cure for something. They just want to take a, a pill or whatever and just be gone. And you know what the, the hard cold reality is. And, you know, I hope that, I, that, this thing, this thing's in here is that there's no such thing as it. There's no such thing as a cure. So even when you're seeing all these stuff going around about cures right now for COVID-19, there's no cure. The cure is you, your health, you taking care of your health because there's no, you're not going to, there's nothing you're going to take special that's going to stop COVID. Um, but there's stuff you can take that's going to stop help with everything that comes your way. So it's like, um, building a house and putting up brick because you want to block the, the wind, but it's not just going to block the wind. It's going to block the snow and all the other elements and keep give you privacy and stuff like that. Right. So it's like, 
you know, it's multi, there's like a multi-purpose for it. So it's not, but if we're all different, we all need different things and we all lead different lifestyles and they all impact us differently. So that's why, and that's why when you see people trying to get natural cures, like people are like, oh, intravenous vitamin C. Well, that might be great depending, what I would love to hear is when they're trying out these different things, what underlying health conditions do the people have that are using them? So do they find more success with somebody with this certain health condition compared to the others? Like, I, I would love to hear more of that information and stuff like that, because it's, like I said, it's going to be, it's going to look different for everybody. Um, I'll pull up another one here. And then I just picked, um, quickly here, I picked some, I picked zinc, just because zinc's pretty important for immune health. And um, this one here is like said some common reasons for zinc deficiency that people might not realize uh, leaky gut and digestive disorder. So obviously if you have any digestive disorder, Crohn's, IBS, anything like that, food sensitivities, anything, um, acid reflux, anything going on in there, you're not going to be absorbing stuff. <laughs> so that's going to be a problem and that's going to cause a zinc deficiency. Um, one of the things about zinc deficiency that I want to hopefully um, create a bigger picture of, zinc utilizes and maintains the body's level of vitamin A. What does vitamin A do? Vitamin converts your vitamin D into its active form. So you see how zinc is related to vitamin D. So when you're stressed out, you're around EMFs. Um, another thing that um, with the magnesium B vitamin zinc is processed foods because your um, sugar, white flowers, your body needs to metabolize that. So it actually gives you um, opposite. You're actually negative in nutrients because it's taking from your body, not replenishing your body. And then, so now that you've depleted your zinc, now you're depleting your vitamin A. Now you're depleting your vitamin D. Now you're messing with your, your calcium. Now you're, you know, and it just goes on and on and on. It doesn't stop. So that's why it's important to recognize this. Uh, medication uses. So NSAIDs, um, like Tylenol, ibuprofen, those kind of things. Like people are saying, like what I've heard now is that if those products came out now, they would never be over the counter. I've seen um, people have actual deficiencies caused from these products. Um, acid blockers, antibiotics, etc. cetera. Um, a lot of people don't realize like a really popular um, medication is the birth control pill. Birth control pill, um, increases your turnover of B vitamins, beta carotene, magnesium, manganese, zinc, antioxidants. Um, it compromises the immune system because of the drop in these nutrients and liver detoxification. And it can increase risk of allergies and autoimmune diseases. So, you know, that, that's something to think about. And again, all these things that's depleting is going to end up going right to your vitamin D as well, right? So that's a very popular one that's definitely worth researching into and looking into if it's something that you take. I'm not saying if you're on a medication, you shouldn't take your medication, but what you should look at is what does it, does it, it's, it's going to deplete something because your body has to metabolize it. What does it deplete and what can I take to offset it then? Or what can I eat to offset it to make sure I'm still getting that nutrient in my body? So I think that's what you need to look at. Acid blockers stop your body, your stomach from making, um, acid, which you need to digest food, especially B12. So if you have no um, acid in your stomach, you're lowering it, your B12 is not getting absorbed. Like it just goes on and on and on. Um, if you're having indigestion, acid blockers shouldn't be used long term. So you want to look at why you're having indigestion, use the acid blockers for emergency situations and, and deal with the reason that you're having the indigestion. A lot of people don't realize that. And when you neutralize your stomach acid, like I'm talking about, if you're using these products every day, you're um, opening up your stomach for pathogenic bacteria to live there that normally couldn't live there because it's acidic. So it's something to think about. Um, poor diet and blood sugar imbalance um, is going to cause zinc deficiency. So if you, ha you have diabetes, if you have, a lot of people have blood sugar issues and don't even know that they do. So, you know, you start realizing that you're having dips of energy throughout the day, like where I feel really good and I feel really bad and I'm craving all this sugar and I'm craving, you know, like those are things to be aware of for diets and eating processed foods. Try and eat as much fresh whole food as you possibly can and save the processed food for um, just occasional snack or need to get it out for a last minute kind of meal type thing, save it. Um, chronic stress, can we talk, we know, we already know that and high toxin exposure. So just those things, that's zinc, but then we see that it's a bigger picture than, than just zinc, right? Like it's huge. And just like zinc itself, 
we pull up this one, is showing you like deficiency symptoms. You see a bunch of stuff on there, but you see insomnia, rashes, eczema, loss of appetite, lowered immunity, um, sinus problems, allergies. You see like all, you know, things that are inflammatory here and on the functions, it will decrease your inflammation. So that's what you want to do right now. You want to make sure you don't have inflammation in your body when you can. Um, and boost healthy immune function. Like, you know, you just see the stuff that it does. And it's not about going out and taking a zinc supplement. It's about making sure you're not allowing other things to take that zinc from your body and including it in your diet. And then right now, if anybody's interested in learning more about um, nutrients, I've been posting on my Waking Up Holistic page on Facebook, all different nutrients and just information about them and just doing like one kind of important one at a time and showing you what the deficiencies cause and, um, and just whatever in extra information I can find that I think is interesting. Like I, I just did selenium and um, selenium gets depleted crazy by acid blockers and inhalants and topical um, medications for inflammation. So people don't realize the stuff you're putting on your body for inflammation, like eczema, stuff like that is depleting your selenium, your selenium, you need, you know, when your selenium is depleted, then you have issues with your zinc. Then you're gonna, you know, and then we went through that whole story and stuff. And um, you need selenium to be able to utilize zinc. So um, just stuff like that. So then people can see that and think about that. So what I'm putting on my skin is that necessary, or should I be looking at why I have eczema and what other things I could be doing, and just use that for huge flare-ups. And then looking at selenium, where can I get selenium from? Like I like to eat Brazil nuts for selenium. Um, stuff like that. But as soon as you know that, well, I better eat three Brazil nuts today because I put this cream on me. At least you know that and you've helped yourself. So that's kind of what I'm hoping. Like I'm hoping people are going to go and research and get really into whatever's going on with them and be encouraged to like start really being their own advocate for their own health and, and their families. So what, what is, what, how would you get more zinc in your system? Well, I mean, and when it comes to taking supplementations, I'm not going to recommend anything here because I can't recommend anything unless, you know, I'm working with somebody. Um, but for zinc itself, like one of the best sources of zinc is pumpkin seeds. And we use pumpkin seed oil at my house. I give that to my kids because zinc is critical during the growing years for growth. So they get zinc and um, through there, but you can get it in meats and um, other, other nuts and seeds. So there's lots of, there's lots of sources out there. It's just making sure those are what your diet's made out of. Right. And with the meat, <clears throat> interesting enough, we watched one of those documentaries the other day about factory farming. So just a friendly reminder, source your meat well. That's all yeah. I'm saying. Source your meat well. Well, quality meats, because there's going to be a difference in, um, if it, if you're going to eat like factory meat, it's going to be off, you're going to get inflammation from that. It's not going to be good. And having I also like to do for people like you know I respect whoever people want to eat um, but my biggest suggestion would be um, doing plant-based with littler amounts of meat if you still want to include meat because then you're getting a bigger variety of different kinds of nutrients in your body and a whole bunch more fiber in your diet a lot of people are eating meat like three times a day and it's you gotta realize that it's not it's it's dead <laughs> so your body has to process it. it has no enzymes in it or anything to help your body out so it's, it can be a lot of wear and tear on your digestive system and your pancreas and stuff like that. So you, I feel like the problem with meat is that we eat too much. <laughs> Not, you know, so, but yeah, it's definitely getting quality meats is, is and quality anything like you're putting it in your body. So trying to get the best that you can, that you can afford and looking at some of the stuff, like I use lentils like crazy. I probably have lentils three or four times a week. I, throw them in everything and beans like black beans and stuff it's cheap you can get you know if you get organic ones it's still cheap if you don't get organic it's even cheaper you can buy them at the bulk food store they have all non-gmo so it's um pretty reasonably cost and you can get lots of protein and stuff right in there so um, yeah, and I, you know it's funny because as we were watching and i can't, it was on netflix i can't remember what it was called and i was shocked because my partner was watching it and usually i'm the one watching this stuff and i'm like Hey, come check this out. We got a little role reversal going on. But as they're talking about uh, the meat and, and the farms and stuff, and they were talking about um, how meat used to be such a big part of our dinners all the time, and it doesn't have to be. And I thought, isn't that funny? Because even like as a parent feeding my family for years, I always felt 
if I gave them a meal that didn't have meat on it, it was a, le a less quality meal. Do you know what I mean? I didn't say yeah. that sentence right, but, and so I thought, isn't that funny how I'm programmed to think that? I have no idea where I got it from. I don't know if it's something my parents said or what it was, but I automatically think for whatever reason, there has to be meat on the plate. And that is so not true. Well, that's, it is, like you say program is funny because that's a belief that we all have been programmed with. It's no different than the dairy um, company. You know, we have like food guides that would have dairy as its own food group. Dairy is a processed food. You don't want to eat a processed food three times a day. It doesn't, it has a high amount of calcium our body can't absorb properly. So it comes out all over the place in all different ailments. And a lot of people don't even recognize them to do with dairy. I had a whole bunch. I didn't even know until I stopped having dairy. And then I was like, oh, I even got healthier than I thought. But they just took it out of the food guide and they put it in with the proteins because it never should have been its own food group. And it was basically paid there. And then you have, you know, like the beef industry and, you know, where's the beef? Like, remember where the, where, where's the beef? That was a big thing. Um, I had a couple of questions that people had asked as well. Um, one of them was about diabetes and just, and everybody's asking us about natural things that they can do. So I think that um, with all the stuff that we talked about already, I think there's lots of probably ideas in there with diabetes, like I mentioned the EMF. So eliminating some of that stuff as much as you can, getting natural light, lots of sunlight, get your vitamin D checked are probably like the biggest things. Um, for food wise, it's just making sure you get lots of fiber with your meals and getting lots of, um, and getting some good sources of protein as well, because those are going to be the things that slow down transit time of food to so not spike your sugar. It's hard to recommend anything really specific more than that without you talking to your doctor because many people are on medications and a lot of the foods that can be taken, like there's many herbs that can help with um, diet, like with blood sugar, but because you're might be on a medication that's already doing that, you don't want to <laughs> to take that. So that's why you'd want to work with a doctor to make sure that you're if you're trying to get over to the more natural stuff that you're doing it together and um, in a healthy way. And one of the things, actually, my last slide here that I haven't shown yet was this one. This is artificial sweeteners, and this is what you want to stay away from: are artificial sweeteners, as you can see. Um, and I'm not talking about like you know like stevia. If you get a good quality stevia, that should be okay. And there's a few like okay things you try and use like fruit and things of that sort as opposed to um, sugar. But these ones here, and again, these are on the market because until somebody can prove that they specifically cause a problem, they don't take it off, right? But you look at what they're, all the things that they're um, connected to. And again, we have breathing problems, which you really want to stay away from right now and lung problems and, you know, all kinds of stuff. So just wanted to I just wanted to share that for a minute. So I hope that that helps a little bit to answer the question um, and also controlling stress as best as you can as well. Um, and for the other question, there was two. One was arthritis and one was rheumatoid arthritis. So I'm just going to address them both at the same time. Again, it was like a lot of the same things because um, if your body needs to, there's inflammation in your body. So you want to address inflammation in the body. Um, with your diet, making sure you're properly absorbing your nutrients and getting all the proper nutrients and all the things we talked about, the steel nutrients, um, looking at that. Um, and then just getting a lot of um, foods that are anti-inflammatory into your body. So if you look up an anti-inflammatory diet um, and seeing what kind of foods are on there and does that make up most of your diet now? And if it doesn't, then maybe switching some stuff um, with the meats, really good quality meats, grass-fed beefs, really important because you're going to get your omega-3s from there. You're going to eat the other beef. You're not going to. You're going to get inflammatory um, components in there. And same with dairy, extremely inflammatory. Dairy is also... And I, forgot to say this too, because it's processed, there's a big link with dairy and diabetes too. So that would be something I keep my eye on if I have blood sugar issues would be, because it, it's processed, your, pan, your pancreas has to deal with that. And most people are drinking like three glasses of milk a day and eating cheese and you know all this stuff and your body's like, whoa, like, give me some enzymes. Um, but back to the arthritis, I would, I would be um, looking at an anti-inflammatory diet, look, at, um, look up nightshades, which is like your peppers and tomatoes and onions um and potatoes did i say potatoes those things can cause inflammation so you want to if that's heavy in your diet those might be things you want to remove for a period of time and reintroduce back in um the other thing i really like to use i have right here is um nettle tea nettle is amazing um for like inflammation so it's 
you can get tinctures of nettle, but again, if you're going to go into a tincture, you want to make sure it's like a strong um, dose of nettle. We only take a few drops a few times a day. Um, you don't want to, you want to make sure if you're on medication and stuff that that's okay first. Nettle tea, um, usually, you know, you drink a, a cup of tea a day, but you can do like two or three cups a day, but that's why people like to take the tincture because they don't want to drink that much of the same kind of tea all day long. But it's um, something worth looking into and researching into and seeing if it's something that you would want to try. I love it for um, the change of seasons. It's really great between um, whenever our seasons are changing and you're getting those allergies. Nettle's really good for that, as well as quercetin, I, which is a really, um, you can find in apples. So I'm always eating apples in the spring and in the fall and nettle tea and vitamin C. So those are things that are super helpful. But I hope that that kind of answered those questions the best that I can without actually knowing any of the people's history. And I would just like to urge them to just keep, keep looking and talk to their doctors and even looking at other healthcare professionals that might have, like looking at a naturopath or somebody that might have, um, is familiar and worked with somebody on the same medications as you, and then they can work with your doctor and you guys can all be a, a nice health team. You can get a nice, you know, you're the, you're in charge, you're the CEO, but then you're putting together your nice team. So. Hey, I love that. That's awesome. And it really makes sense because, you know, you get that good team together, you get proactive, resolve some things, you won't have to see everybody as often, That's right? What, as opposed to going to the doctor every six months for the rest of your life. Yeah, my doctor would not know me if you see me on the street. <laughs> exactly. Me neither. And I've always been one to go the least amount as possible. So. I'll, well, I, I'm very blessed because I have you in my life now, but like previous to knowing you though, I would, I would try to walk that fine line between doing my own research, but looking up so much stuff. Like, I mean, you can find something for everything, right? So due diligence, I guess, and, and asking other real human beings. That's the other part of it as well. Yeah. And I wouldn't say if you have a concern, like one of the things with my doctor, like having kids, I'm not the mom to bring my kids to the doctors all the time, but I'll call if I have a question, I'll just call and ask it. Like, and I'll be like, Oh, they're not feeling good. What do I need to watch for that? I would, should bring them in as opposed to just bringing them in the first place when they're not feeling well. Like I'm not sitting here going, Oh, I'm not going to use my doctor, but I just don't have a need to. And even with the nutritional consultation, like my place for that, that where I fit in is that you come see me and I help you um, with your diet and your lifestyle. So then that way you're, it's almost like you're, I'm your makeup artist. Like, you know what I mean? I'm making, I'm making everything look good and helping you out that way. So then when you go see your doctor that you're putting your, your best foot forward, like you're showing up all ready instead of going there and, you know, with a bunch of stuff going on and feeling overwhelmed and you have a little bit more control about what's going on and then you are kind of working more together. So sure. Kind of and then when you walk in, you can say, I already tried this, this, and this, and that didn't work. Right, which makes sense. So, on that note, Angie, how do we find you? What if we want? What did we? What if we wanted to follow? Like, just give us your digits and your numbers, please. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm online. I have a Facebook page. It's wakingupholistic.ca, and then I also have a website. Waking up. Oh, sorry. Waking up holistic is just my Facebook page. Wakingupholistic.ca would be my um, website, and I have both. Um, ways you can contact me right through there and um, I just I usually just work through emails for contact because I be just because I do homeschool so I don't usually have my phone on me and my house is super loud so that way I can call and give you my full attention when we're when we can set up a time to meet so perfect and the thing with Angie as well um, is that if you like her Facebook page which you know, with everything going on with stress right now, it's very important you surround yourself with things that lift you up. So if you go through, especially if you have time right now, if you go through your, on your Facebook and you go through your pages and different people that you follow, get rid of all the stuff that's drama filled, all the stuff that brings you down, but make sure you like pages like Angie's because she shares recipes, she shares tips, she shares articles, she shares a lot of information that will serve you well, mind, body, all of it. And that's the kind of stuff you want to expose yourself to. Because instead of looking out the window and worrying about what your neighbor's doing, you could be reading her blog, which will serve you much better. And it's interesting because 
of all the things that you talked about today and, and your slides, and you did a great job, by the way, I just got to tell you, but all, all the things that inflammation was consistent, that stress was consistent through it all. And when you're stressed, you're dense. And when you're dense, things get inflamed. So when you, you look at all that stuff, it like you can't not see it is so obvious the elephant in the room that it all ties in together so definitely make sure that you surround yourself by the right things and surrounding yourself by angie's page is definitely the right thing so that will help you and you know she knows her stuff she replies you know if you send her a message or whatever and stay tuned because every couple months we do a video together which is absolutely awesome yeah, and I want to thank you for having me on here. And I want to mention too, because something I've been doing is I've been in school for herbs. And if people are looking for um, just some basic information, I'm at the herbalacademy.com. And it's, it's T-H-E, the Herbal Academy, if you're looking for it. They have a great blog, so many recipes, lots of tea recipes, lots of um, household recipes, things like, you know, that you can use like beauty care and stuff like that, that are super simple. So I really like them just for just regular information and like the blog is free to anybody. So that would be something I would recommend if you're looking for some of that type of stuff all in one place. It's a really great place. <laughs> and you're writing it I'm down. I'm writing it down. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Good. Yeah. That's fabulous. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I always love my time with you and I feel like we've covered some good information here. Um, and I definitely look forward to having you on again. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Okay. Awesome. I will see you soon. Thank you so much.